Trevor and Bex answer this question. Um, obviously, the game was similar to what, what it was last year. Uh, you think about it, except we were up 3 nothing instead of them. It happened. Uh, the mindset for our football team is real simple. Um, don't allow the, the emotion of the stadium to get to us early. That's what's happened the last two games that these guys have played. We've been up 56 to 14. And if we could just withstand that first quarter of barrage of uh, the fan base uh, and, and their football team, we just felt like if we could just make it a methodical game, we'd have a chance. And it kind of turned out that way. Now we were fortunate, you know, we got a couple plays here or there. But when those kind of games, that's what happens. You just kind of go back and forth. Field position is critical. This game kind of played out like last year's game, to be quite honest. Uh, there's a lot of similar, similar things that, that happened. Um, fouls were big in this game. Fouls were big, or it just either prevented drives, prevented plays, giving people other opportunities. Um, but uh, our kids did a great job with their resolve on the road and playing a really, really good football team. Uh, Coach has built him a heck of a program here, and uh, I can't say enough about it in this football team. They're tough, they're physical. And you have to play that way if you're going to have a, have a chance to try to beat them. And we were fortunate. Um, foul at the end. Hey, you know, got to miss some kicks. Uh, our kick has been really good. He's made some kicks. It's kind of interesting. It, it got down to the kicking game. And so we're fortunate. Um, we got a lot of work to do. Offensively, we knew that it was going to be very difficult to run the football. Uh, we came in with a plan of trying to get it out of our quarterback's hand fast because it can. They could hit the quarterback, they hit him a couple times. But at the end, um, the kid did good, boy. He really did good. He made a lot of plays with his legs. And I think that's surprising for a lot of people. His ability to run, and he's a smart runner. But when, was in, but when the last drive, when, when I talked to him, I said, here it is. He looked at me and said, Coach, I got it. I said, OK, here we go. Let's go. And uh, he did some things with his legs. He basically made a bunch of first downs that last night, made some critical runs. I mean, third down run, I mean, boom. fourth down, I mean, it's just, it's, he's going to be a good player one day. So, fortunate enough, uh, he got us a win, and uh, now we've got to get ready for uh, Pac-12 play, as they say. Michelle's got the mic, his name and affiliation. Uh, Michelle Gardner, Arizona Republic. Coach, you talked all year about James' composure and his maturity. This almost seems like a coming of age game for him where he started what you hope is a legacy. Well, I think um, the more that we see of him play, and he's a freshman. He's not a senior, he's a freshman. This is his third football game as a collegiate athlete. Uh, and the first time he won a game on the road. Uh, so it says a lot about uh, the potential, but he needs help. He can't do it by himself. And we, we have to get better on offense. We know that. We started, we started a left tackle as a freshman, boy, and a guard, you know, and, and, and um, 28 freshmen played today. And I don't want to get that overlooked. I want to make sure we understand that. And there's going to be some times where errors are made because of lack of experience. But I think as you're trying to build a program, that's, that's, that, that's what I'm here to do. And uh, I'm proud of it. This is a tough place to play. I mean, this is, this is a tough place. And uh, they never blinked. They never blinked. I mean, just, they just didn't. I mean, the score was what it was, and no, no one blinked. And when they scored, we went, okay, we'll get the ball back. And the defense got the ball back. Uh, and I know how our coordinator feels, Danny. You know, and you'll hear from him. I mean, I know he's mad at him at the end because he wanted to just be done with it, get off the field, right? And uh, they made some plays. I mean, they, they got some good players. They made some plays, and at the end, you know, I'm, I'm asking him, okay, we're going overtime. What do you want to do? He said, I'm going to play defense. Coach I said, okay. And then lo and behold, there's a foul. And the uh, you know, kid misses the next one. Gonna roll overtime. Chris Carpenter, the source. Herm, can you speak to the strategy and execution of what you were doing defensively, other than the touchdown where Crosswell was off the field? Uh, there were maybe a couple of plays that you give up, but not much. A couple of things. We felt like our, our, our back end could match up with them in, in man coverage. And uh, Daddy did a good job of doing some things schematically up front to uh, rush the quarterback. 
and we just felt like we could man up against them. We have a pretty good secondary, um, and we just said, this is what we're going to do. We're going to play man-to-man -man coverage a lot, and we did. And we just felt we had enough guys back there that could, you know, no, we didn't do it all, all, always right. But that's the strength of our defense. It's our secondary. And we've got some athletes back there. And the more they play, and the more they put in these situations, the more they're going to improve. Now, we've got a lot of improvement to do. They caught ball up there. I had 200 yards passing. But I think at the end, when we needed to make some plays, we were able to do that. Coach, Coach Rubino, Devils Digest. I know the first two games offensively were, were much less smoother than you expected them to be, but there's something to be said about grinding out those two wins because you grind that one today instead of just coming off you know, two blowout wins, and now you're facing an excellent defensive team in Michigan State. No doubt. You know, I, I live my life this way in Tampa. You just call it buck ball. Now, we had four Hall of Famers in the defense. It was 10 to 3, 9 to 6. Every once in a while, you know, we'd score a touchdown. It might be 13 to 7. But um, hard to win that way, especially in college football, because of the, of the rules and the way everybody throws the ball around. But we, we've been able to do that. I mean, I, I do know this. Um, We've given up 21 points. I, I don't know. I, I, I've, I've been around a lot of football, but I think that's good. <laughs> and if you do that, uh, you have a chance to win football games. Now, it's not. It's not pretty. It's not. It's nothing you go want to pay to watch, right? But we're going to play the way we have to play right now because it's. That's appropriate for us. And if the offense gets going, then, then, then all of a sudden maybe other things will happen. But right now, we got to keep it tight. And that's a credit to Danny and his staff and the players. I mean, them kids have given up 21 points in three days. 21, I can't say it again, 21 points in college football in three days. That's pretty good. In my count, now, some people may say it's not, but I'm going to say it is. And I'm the head coach, I get to say that. <laughs> Greg, and then back here. Coach, ahead of that, Greg Moore, Arizona Republic, uh, ahead of the last drive, did you have a Offensively, message? Greg? Yes, offensively. Uh, when Eno stretches it out, scores. Yeah. Jane was running a lot more, but he wasn't sliding early. No. I'm certain that was functioning down in distance in game time. Did you tell him? <laughs> yeah, well, I, I told him, big fella, it's time. And he went, I got you, coach. But you see where he went. He went out of bounds. He's a smart runner. He's a smart runner. This guy is, uh, he's pretty savvy as a quarterback. And I think it caught people by surprise that he would take off and run like that. I mean, one, it was 30, what, 15 or something like that. He takes off. He, he, he took, he, he saw the coverage, and as soon as he saw it, he took off. He said, I can make it. And he made it. And I told him, so you start running now. You know when the journey's over. You run out of bounds. And he did. He ran out of bounds and made some critical, critical first half. Now he was looking downfield, but they did a nice job in coverage. So you can imagine going forward now, they're probably going to have a spy guy on him because now they're going to say he's a running quarterback. He ran good today when we needed him to. Herm Fred, you've been uh, CBS here last Yes, sir. I know this victory is about your team and your players, but I also know you seem to have a fondness for Coach Dantonio. You took an extra second with him shaking his hand. You could feel the whole place ready to brace for a celebration. Is that a little strange? No, I, you know, I, I, uh, I admire men in this profession that understand that it's not about them. It's about the game of football. He's done that ever since he got into the coaching business. And I've watched him from afar. Uh, I've watched him build this program. And he is an ambassador for the game of football. And when young men leave his watch, they're better for it. They're better men. He gets it. And uh, we talked about that uh, in the pregame. Saw a coach. Uh, and we talked about, you know, hey, you know, this is bigger than us. And it is. We're just stewards. Uh, his old, you know, he texted me last night. He says, I'm going to see you. He said, I'm waiting on you. And he comes out. And he's a good friend. And he gets it too. <clears throat> this is, 
This is about winning games. It's about winning championships. It's about doing all that stuff. But it's about building better men, too. Okay? You can't, just, you can't be selfish and say, well, this is all about me. Because it's not about us. It's about these kids. What can we do to better them? How does this great game help them? Those two men I just mentioned that are at Michigan State, the basketball coach and, and, and the football coach, they've done that. They've done that. And, 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 and I'm, I'm glad I can look at men that kind of feel the same way I do about this game. Coach <coughs> Doug. Uh, we, we only get to see Jaden like after practice or you know, yeah. on the field a little bit. Not a whole lot. But can, can you just think of one example <coughs> where he has acted uh, like his age, um, whether it's in a yeah. meeting or you know, oh, yeah. he's just rattled, confused, something? He, he's, he's, he's always laughing and making jokes. I mean, you don't see that. He's on the sideline. When I walked over there in the fourth quarter, and I'm going, all right, coach, we're good. He just comes here, we're good. I said, really? He said, you know, we haven't moved the ball past 50 yet. We're good. <laughs> coach, we're good. I said, all right. And I told him at the end, I said, now we're running out of time. He said, this is it. This is, this is the drive. you got to go do it. And uh, offensive guys, um, they never gave up. They just kept playing. It's similar to last year, guys. It's the game of last year when you think about it. Except they had the ball, and they were able to move it down there. And, um, but that's kind of, I think we all knew that. We just, we wanted to make it a game like that. We didn't want to get into a game where, we're down 28, and we're fighting uphill out of halftime. You know, it just so we, we got the we got the half settled, and then it was just a matter of let's just keep playing and see what happens. Two more, Chris, and then here. Herm, can uh, you just talk about what went into the decision to move Cabral back to center and put the true freshman out there left tackle, and how you think that functioned? Well. That was our best option to solidify some things, to move Cabral back in there, and that way he could. He could help the guard situation. Um, we felt like we had, we had a young talent to left tackle. And if we're truly trying to build a program, then you got to play those guys. And now people would say, why would you play them against Michigan State? Well, we don't have an alternative. I mean, we, that's what we have, you know, and, and um, we don't have a lot of depth there. We have a lot of young guys on this football team. I, I think next year there only might be five seniors on this whole football team, and it's going to be on incoming freshmen that we recruit again, it'll be sophomores and juniors. That'll be the football team. And so we got to play that way. And we, we just every week we have to come up with a plan to, to how, how to try to win a football game. You know, and the more you win, the more confident you get. But we got a lot of work to do. It's it's hard. This, these games are hard, man. It's hard. You know, this is it's just every possession is like really. You know, it's just it's hard. It's hard living. I don't know. I had a really good job. You know, and, uh, <laughs> I think about that sometimes. We used to read it up there that way. Why would you do this? Because I love it. I really do. I love the players. I love the sense of it all. I really do. You know, it's, it's, just, it's, it's just something about it. It's just nothing like it. It's nothing like doing this. It's just. A lot of fun. It really is. A lot of heartache, but a lot of fun. That's fun. Coach Carson Field and Bruno Intel. What do you tell Eno Benjamin in a game like this against Michigan State's defense where he's forced to get fewer carries? How do you keep him positive? Because he's a captain of the team. And he wants to do whatever it takes to win. And we had a plan of saying, look, these guys played two football games and it was minus three rushing yards. We have two freshmen start on the offensive line and a freshman quarterback. If we would have tried to run the ball on these guys, I would have been sitting up here and you would have asked me, Coach, why would you do that? That's what you asked me. You literally, and you ain't been around for ball long enough to ask me that, but you would asked me that. Right? Why would you try to run against these guys, minus three, right? And then I would have been answering that question. So every week, I think, sometimes we fail to realize the plan is to win the game. I mean, that's the ultimate plan. It's like, how do you do this? Well, we felt that we had to do something a little bit different. Uh, a lot of our runs were wide passes. 
right, to the receivers. That was a run. That, that was a, to me, that's a run. All right. Now you know wasn't involved in it, but he knew it was good. He don't lose. Say, look, it's going to be there. Every once in a while, we're going to get it to you. But it's kind of ironic, though. The only touchdown we scored was scored. Tell me, we scored a touchdown. Eight up in the Okay. Yeah, yeah. Thanks, coach. All right. I got. I ain't bothering you, young man. I'm just messing with you.